tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, your background, where you came from, and what brought you to the city of Milwaukee. Sure. So I am um, uh, born in Texas, South Texas. So I spend most of my time there, spend a little bit of time in Oklahoma City before I came here to Milwaukee. But uh, my journey in life was really defined by the legacy of my grandfather, who was a farm worker, worked with his hands in South Texas. Um, and he never learned to read, but he knew how to make a difference in the community from that. And I think that really stuck home with me uh, through my academic career after graduating from the University of Texas. I wanted to go back and get engaged in building communities. And that started my nonprofit career that took me to become the CEO of City on a Hill here in Milwaukee now. So how, th tell us about the mission of the City on the Hill and how it connects with the purposefulness of Art Serna. I have seen communities of color struggle in my journey in life and, and definitely was true in my grandfather's uh, generation. Um, and City on a Hill is about restoring hope in people, uh, advancing uh, justice, and enhancing quality of life. All of those matter, all three of them, and together is the integration of those three is the mission that we're on at City on a Hill, and right now, short term, we're about lifting 1,500 children in the city of Milwaukee out of poverty. Tell me a little bit about your, how, you, how you're going to achieve that goal, person by person, family by family, neighborhood by neighborhood. Where do you start with that? Yeah, so first of all, I've spent some time in education. I was an executive director for Teach for America. And, and we know from that, that sector that you can scale change and systematize change and change large amounts of the lives and trajectory of opportunity for a large number of kids. So I know by systems that it can happen. You can help a lot of kids all at once as you see systems changers uh, within the education space. But for us, uh, we've also seen it happen over the last 22 years in individual families, and we've seen a desire from young people to want to do more. It's not enough, though. And so our strategy is focused on three zip codes. There's about 30 neighborhoods within those three zip codes in the central city of Milwaukee. Um, and it's building the coalition of the willing uh, and taking it one neighborhood at a time, one family at a time, but building that coalition of families together, empowering them to carry the voice and carry the message. You can't do that alone. You need partners. Absolutely. Uh, tell me a little bit about your, part, your partnership thoughts, uh, who you have, who you'd like to have, and obviously Wagon, which is one of your partners. Absolutely. Right yeah, so, so we're, we're not a school. So we, we do everything outside the academics that's important for a child to thrive and for their household to thrive. Uh, but partnerships is the way that we do that. So we manage uh, a property the former Milwaukee hospital over 100,000 square feet of property. So we're able to bring in partners uh, that can have a satellite office within City on a Hill to uh, leverage or wrap around model. But partners like Wagget allow us to um, innovate within the education space, how to supplement education to put kids on a trajectory to um, a, a great living wage that can start building income. But we also work with the Near West Side partners, all the anchor institutions. We're very fortunate to be in a place where we have anchor institutions like Aurora and Harley and others as part of the Near West Side partners, that, that it's not just a vision of city on a hill, but they have an actual active strategic plan for the entire Near West Side that we can come alongside to build meaningful opportunities for young people. You mentioned living wages, and when you're dealing with a young person, you have to prepare that person for the, with the skills, with the life skills, with the job skills, and with the civic skills to fully engage in the community, to help that community through the, the voice of youth, through the deeds yeah. of youth, lift, lift that community up. Give me your thoughts a little bit about how, how the community can be lifted up through that youth voice, youth deeds, uh, that pride, purpose, hope that the youth have that might be translated and transferred to others. Throughout my career, I've worked with young people um, and their parents and caregivers, and I know that they carry, this work is hard. It, it is long-term work. You're making a 10, 20, 30 year commitment in this type of work. It's not easy work. And you need the, you need the energy and the passion to sustain you in that work long-term. And I've seen that young people bring that fuel to allow movements to sustain themselves over time. Uh, and so I believe we need youth boys to give clarity, uh, sustain the thing over a long term, 
uh, and I believe the, the use of social media, the, the, all those tools, there's a book, if people haven't read it, it's called New Power, uh, and it talks about the ability now that you have to scale uh, positive social movements through social media, but also the voice of the, the young generation. And so when we're in spaces, when we're talking about defining the future, we don't want to define it in a boardroom. We want to define it unless the boardroom is made up of young people, right? With others that are directly impacted by the issue we're trying to resolve. Well, you mentioned the living wages, and you can't have living wages without an employer. Absolutely. And so you've been engaging employers in a, in a, in a couple ways and using something called the badging process. It's a tool that mm -hmm. employers can use to look at a young person or any person for that matter and understand the skills and, and the opportunities that, that exist in that young person. Tell yeah. me a little bit about uh, the employers that you've engaged and, and then the, this use of badging as a tool, uh, micro credential. Yeah, so, so the stuff, Jeff, that we talk about requires city level transformation. Like the, the conditions around a child development within a city, a neighborhood, requires the economy to be strong. And that requires employers and corporations to be doing well. Uh, but also pathways of opportunity for young people. We, we have been training young people for the last 22 years around skill building for the 21st century at City on Hill. But we needed a way to validate that experience, and, and we were fortunate to come alongside Wagget to learn more about the badging and, and, that, and what that enables us to create a bridge between what we're trying to do and what employers are seeking to do in their industry in terms of long-term workforce development, but also providing a, a, a nice wage for people to actually build their families around. And so we've been working with Berkhammer Construction, we've been working with a Daddy's Grill on the near west side, um, and others to try to build bridges around mentoring and coaching, apprenticeship-like connections for young people, but also that creates a, a future workforce that is, is built around character and purpose and identity and a commitment to make Milwaukee stronger. So do you have any thoughts about opening the door a bit wider beyond uh, Daddy's or beyond uh, Berghammer and Bolt and other, other partners? Any, any thoughts about opening the door a bit wider for Milwaukee business community, other employers? 100%. I mean, uh, the, the 1,500 kids, they're not all going to want a one particular lane of work in the future, right? So we, we want to be hyper-personalized. And so in that, I, I believe that we, we want to get into other industries. We want to get into tech. We, we want to get into other, what are, we want to get into nursing, we, we want to get into healthcare. So we absolutely would, are trying to work on building longer term relationships with some of the strongest uh, growth focused uh, corporations in Wisconsin to build partnerships around this very model. In closing, uh, you've been observing some of the young people who are involved in, in Daddies and in the Berghammer Bolt project. Uh, what did you see in these young people as you observe them, as you engage with them, and yeah. as they engage with, with some of the professional people and the trades people in, that were teaching them? They're a completely new generation. I mean, they, they grew up their entire t life with one of these in their hands. So their appetite for information, to engage and communicate with one another, uh, but also they see, they see the power and, and the, the power of technology in what we're doing. So we, we went to the plumbers union is an example, and they got to see all the tech that Milwaukee Tool can bring to the table to make your ability to do a job much faster, more cost efficient. So I've seen in them an appetite to try to do bigger things with greater efficiency and have, I guess I will say this, that they want to find purpose in the work that they do and that's incredibly important to them in their generation. They're seeing the failures of our generations in terms of rebuilding communities, and, and I think they're all in to do great things, but also make the world better as they do that. So what you said is that pride, purpose, and hope. Pride to myself and my community, mm -hmm. purpose in terms of we, not me, hope in terms of good careers and meaningful lives. It fits really any generation, but this generation in particular, and maybe the employers and the adults where they're helping them. 100%. Thank you. Thank you.